Hello, hello, and welcome to One New Podcast. And today I'm with Scarlett. Hi, Scarlett. Hi. How are you? Fine. Okay, well, uh, maybe some of you know her, but maybe some don't. So I will introduce her. Well, Scarlett, could you talk to us a bit more? I know you are from a... I graduated from Ecolven. Yeah, I graduated, graduated for, from here and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't have much to do because I have, well, I hadn't decided yet uh, what, I, what I was going to study, so I didn't, yeah, I didn't have much to do, so I, I got here to, like, yeah, practice my English a little bit and something like that um, before going to the university. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So Scarlett has been at the Language Center lately and as, as she was saying, uh, she has been learning a lot uh, about English, but more than learning, practicing too. And um, I think that's something extraordinary because uh, you are in the middle of a big decision in your life that is choosing the degree, uh, the university program you're going to study. But while you take that decision, you've been in touch with English, right? And um, that is something that I have found um, some people do it. For example, when you finish high school, maybe you go to an academy to learn English before studying international business or any kind of program. But in your case, what is your motivation about uh, practicing and continue learning English? I become better, I think. I, well, have a basic and um, level English but I would like to practice more for being more like fluent in in the yeah in the language because I I would really like to to learn it fully fully completely mm -hmm. like yeah and to start a new a new language too to start learning a new new language. Okay, what new language? That's interesting. French, actually. Oh. Yeah, I don't know anything about it, but I, I would like to start to learning because, um, yeah, because of what I want to study, what I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to do very much, uh, pretty much to the languages. So the more languages I know, the more <laughs> pay I got to. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's it kind of necessary to for um, gastronomy. Oh yeah, so you're interested in gastronomy? Yeah, and uh, more for the part of like pastry and confectionery, I get, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, like like yeah, I am um, sweet things. <laughs> I don't yeah, know like you... desserts yeah, and like cakes, some things like that, and uh, more. I don't know. It's more for the art part, I think. Well, mm -hmm. in my opinion, it's more, yeah. <laughs> yeah, English is important in the tourist sector and uh, gastronomy is usually linked with that kind of sector, right? Like you have a, to cook, maybe if it's Colombian food or international food, Anyways, you will always be open to receive people from any place of the world. So I think that's something beautiful too, that mix you're doing between English and gastronomy. Well, uh, Scarlett, in simple words, why do you like languages? Well, I don't know, but it's... I, I don't have a particular reason to why I like it. It's just, I don't know, it's not so difficult to me i guess mm -hmm. i just i You're just like to that. learn them and and it's it's funny because you can just i don't know what series or something like that and you're still gonna learn so mm -hmm. it's, it's and it's very very useful <laughs> you got to um create i don't know receive more money from it <laughs> yeah you have more opportunities right yeah, in but, your studies in your job in, in a job that I want to, I don't know, acquire something like that, if mm -hmm. I have a kind of a level in English, they could pay me more. And that's very important right now. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, what would you say to someone who 
maybe doesn't like English, but knows it's important for his job. Well, everyone has something that it doesn't, well, what it does, doesn't get along with it. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't match really. Uh, like for me, it's math, something like that. But English is very important and you always will find a way to like, I don't know, match with it. Like if it's not for classes, like in a, in a more academic form, you can mm -hmm. do it more like a fun way, like just watching series and listening to music that of the genre that you like, but in English and listening to like, yeah, things like that, that podcasts or any other content in English and that is still going to work and like a learning, like a class. It doesn't yeah. have to be um, that academic. Yeah. You just uh -huh. can listen of something that you like, that you enjoy. And even with that, you can learn so much. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Like, uh, we always have likes and dislikes, right? That's part of our personality. So nothing better than mixing those personal likes and dislikes with the language, right? And um, I also think, and maybe that's uh, something that is important to clarify. Uh, usually people think English, it's it's a subject, it's a content, it's a list of topics, uh, it's grammar, but English is a language, right? So you can, uh, you can talk about maths in English, you can talk about physics, chemistry in English, uh, about music in English. So uh, English and any language you'll be learning, you can mix it in a natural way with your likes and dislikes. Right. <laughs> so, how do you do that in your day in your daily life? Well, and like like you said, like something like serious or mm -hmm. like content, and more like social media. All my I don't know things that are related to social media or you know, serious movies are in English. So, yeah, I think for that part. And the most content that I consume in the, in the internet is is from the English part, from the English, yeah, part of it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's a natural approach, right? It's not like if you don't want to to be all the time into a classroom learning English, maybe a traditional system. You can also follow other ways, right? Like watching series. There are many people who have learned, for example, uh, through video games, right? Yeah, because there are so many words in there that, yeah. Yeah, and they usually come in English. Like, if you want to play the latest video game, you have to wait for it to be translated into Spanish. <laughs> so you have to start in English. Yeah, and that that work with so many other things, like yeah, series or like I don't know, even books. Mm -hmm. and for the ones who like to read and yeah if you don't want to wait that much you just read it in english and it's so much better you learn yeah so much. yeah same happens with uh, the general knowledge like if you want to get to know the latest advance about medicine about any invention in science then you have to look for that information in english right that happened for example during covid oh yeah yeah, mm -hmm. it was it was it was pretty difficult in there, but I think yeah, and even if you want more, I don't know, useful information, most of the most I don't know, like top mm -hmm. articles are in English. So if you want to, um, I don't know, acquire a most, I don't know, um, a more specific, a more I don't know, kind of better knowledge, uh, knowledge yes. about something you can search it up and like for the english part of the article and yeah it could be better yeah well there is something beautiful about languages and you were also saying you're interested in french and uh it's, it's something that a uh, claire crunch says she says that when you learn a language you embody a new culture so talking about culture, what is something you like 
about English culture and what is something you like about French culture? Okay. I don't know if it's okay to me to say this. It's okay, no worries. But <laughs> English culture is in that much a thing like for you yeah mm -hmm. yeah i i mean they kind of don't have a culture i mean <laughs> yeah, they're 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 just i don't know kind of <laughs> me yeah they're kind of just like um i don't know absorbing about uh they're absorbing other cultures not they just don't have their own culture but basically like the food what is the food that in they have, I don't know, French fries. They aren't even French, but yeah, the hamburgers. No. So all, the, all, yeah, all the, the food is not even American. Yeah, no, it's not English. The, the food is even American. There's not <laughs> something like a American culture, I guess. It is. I don't know if it's really okay to me to say that, but it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's okay because there's some linguistics that actually sustain that English is. Uh, uh like an international language and an international culture in consequence yeah because they mm -hmm. don't have this like a, a specific thing they yeah. just they're a mix of some other countries that uh search an opportunity in there so it's not like yeah they're they're just not one <laughs> yeah united states yeah they're just a mix of so many other cultures so many other countries yeah and about that there is a, an interesting fact that it's that english uh, has many many words right it's it, it has been turned because it wasn't in the language with most words in the world and actually when you when you sit down and analyze the kind of words it has apart from being latin and greek that come from another language um it's also because uh, given that English is so international, so many people from every nation starts using, for example, what we call in Latin America Spanglish, right? So we start making up words, we start like interacting in both languages, and yeah, translating like, words. yeah, like <laughs> translating in a way that we could understand more and that we prefer more, and that what other countries also do, so yeah exactly that's what i mean so uh you find in 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 that process you also find some contrast like for example if in our spanish culture meaning hispanic the hispanic community we we tend to use a uh, like anglicisms right like english words in spanish but something that calls my attention scarlett it's that in pakistan for example they don't use one word but they use complete sentences sometimes so they speak like a complete sentence in in urdu that is a, their native language and then a complete sentence in english so it's also part of that uh, maybe interaction you were talking about like what is pure english then it's uh, maybe questionable because it's always influenced coming and going with other cultures yeah and other thing is that no one actually speaks their languages their language good. Like if you want to speak your like your Spanish really, really really correct, you have to actually study it. Like like if you want to teach it, because yeah, we the the languages all all of it is improving, and yeah. Uh, like you said, it's influenced for other things yeah. that come. So yeah, it it doesn't stay the same. It's uh, it's always changing and always we always uh, search for our our I don't know like our, our comfy confidence mm -hmm. like like for uh, ourselves being comfortable with our language. So we adapt it like we want. Mm hmm yeah you're right well um just to finish uh what would you say to someone who is maybe in his uh, 17 18 or 19 and is still thinking about what a uh, program to study at university what advice or recommendation would you give to that person uh, what do you mean 
like uh it happens a lot that when you finish high school you don't know what to study <laughs> you are like oh should i study business should i study um management and then you start like uh, maybe you even start the program, maybe you even go to university and you take one semester, two semesters, and then you change the program because you haven't decided. Right? right. So what advice would you give to that kind of person who is like confused about what to study? Well, I think that, well, I haven't decided yet. So it's, well, mm -hmm. and then haven't decided yet totally i don't know if this is what i want to do like my whole life but it's one i want to do now yeah. because you always uh, get tell to like oh you have to choose something that you want to do for the rest of your life i mean i don't know if i want to be here the rest of my life i don't know if i'm going to be breathing for the rest of my for that much time i don't know mm -hmm. what is going to happen next so in this time i want to study this if later i change my mind then i could change my career like well not obviously like so many times mm -hmm. like i have to do this i know this thing for a very considerable time i mean i plan to do what i want to study for uh, yeah, a long time, mm -hmm. but I mean, who knows, maybe I change my mind in some years and I will study other career. It doesn't matter. It's just something that it, that you really like today. Yeah. If you want, you really, really are passionate about something today. You really just study that because that opportunity can just pass and you will regret it. Yeah, I find it so meaningful, Scarlett. Thank you so much for sharing because um, I think it's deep what you have said. Like, what do you want to do now is what matters because maybe later in 20 years, you will be doing something different, right? If yeah. you don't see yourself doing the same thing for the rest of your yeah, life. Yeah, because like language has changed. Mm -hmm. The world itself changed. You change. So it doesn't gonna be the same in like 10 years. So I can study something, I can work on it, but in 10 years, the world can be different. I may be different, so I can just do it, do differently, do it differently. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, thank you so much, Scarlett, for being with us today. And thank you so much for watching. See you in our next podcast.